Hi guys, what's up? My name is Dave Vaughn, and today I'm gonna show you guys ways you can use a compressor pedal with your guitar starring the Galactivice compressor pedal. Let's do it. In this video, I'm gonna go over the basics of a compressor. I'm gonna briefly go over each knob and explain what they do. I'm also gonna give you guys some starting points for styles such as leads, finger picking, funk, punk, rock, and hardcore. So, first things first, I'm gonna go over the basics of compressor. Now, I know what you're thinking, compressor, who needs it? I was in the same exact boat, but hopefully this will show you guys that it's probably one of the most important pedals that you could have in your chain. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna go over the basics of a compressor. What does a compressor do? A compressor takes the loud parts of your playing and it'll bring that down so it'll match the quiet parts of your playing by bringing those quiet parts up to overall create a balanced tone. This can help with a lot of things. For example, when playing leads, doing techniques such as hammer-ons, pull-offs, tapping, can be a lot quieter than just striking the strings with your pick. That's where the compressor comes in. It brings the picking down and it brings all those techniques such as tapping, hammer-ons, all of that stuff up to create overall just more balance with your lead playing. So for situations where you want your guitar to be more sensitive, but you don't want it to be distorted, for styles such as neo soul and finger picking, the compressor is the perfect pedal to reach for. A compressor can also give you so much more sustain. For instance, when you play a long note, think about the tail of that note, right? The string kind of gets quieter the longer you hold it out. Since the compressor brings up the quieter parts, it gives that note so much more time and so much more sustain and length in your playing. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my guitar and we're gonna go over each of the individual knobs on the compressor pedal. So I have the FGN Iliad. This is going into the all pedal Galactivice compressor pedal. That's going into the orange Tiny Terror and the universal audio aux box that's right behind me. And then all of this stuff is going into the interface. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna play a chord and I'm gonna play it with the pedal off and then I'm gonna turn the pedal on so you can hear the difference of a compressed signal versus a non-compressed signal. So right now I'm going to play a chord with the compressor off and then I'm gonna turn it on so you guys can hear the difference of what it sounds like with the compressor on and off. So right now it is off, let's see what it sounds like. So now, let's turn on the compressor and see what it sounds like. Everything is set to 12 o'clock, by the way. The mix knob is how much compressed signal we are getting from the pedal. So if we turn it all the way to the left, we're gonna get pretty much the natural guitar sound that we're getting from the amp. And then if we turn it all the way to the right, we're getting only the compressed signal. So this is one of those knobs that I butchered when I first was using compressor pedals because I was like, I bought this compressor pedal, I just wanna hear the compressed signal because why would I want any of the other signal if I bought the compressor pedal so I can hear the compression? Turn me all the way up and as you can tell, it definitely squashes all the life out of your, your playing. So you don't necessarily wanna have that cranked all the way, but you wanna find a nice blend. Some compressor pedals is also called blend, but on our Galactivice, it is called mix. So you wanna find that nice blend, that nice mix of the original signal and the compressed signal, right? So we'll go ahead and turn that back to 12 o'clock. We aren't gonna dial anything crazy in yet, just yet. Um, and then we're going to talk about sustain. So sustain is also known as threshold. What this knob is doing is telling your compressor how much to compress. So when it's all the way to the left, it's slightly doing some compression. But as we turn it up, it is doing more of that compression. So it's taking our louder parts and squishing them down even more and it's elevating the quieter parts. A lot of times when using things such as drive or distortion, a lot of players 
get a compressor pedal and they're like, man, I, I bought a compressor pedal, but I really just don't vibe with it because it made everything sound super noisy. That reason being is because if you crank the sustain all the way up, it's going to pick up every little nuance of the guitar, the amp, everything. I'll show you that for example. So right now, I'll just play this chord. I'll let it stop, let it resonate so you guys can hear that. Now, I'm going to turn the sustain all the way up. And immediately you can hear that it's bringing up all those quiet things you probably didn't even notice at first, right? This knob is perfect for when you want to get your leads to stand out in the mix. Because it's gonna take the, the finger picking, the pull-offs, the hammer-ons, all that stuff that we talked about previously, and it's just really gonna make it shine. It's gonna bring that volume up with the sacrifice that you're gonna lose a lot of your, your low end. It's bringing your ladder parts down. So you wanna find a nice balance between using it for leads and, and switching between both. But it definitely makes your lead work just rip. <laughs> So that's our sustain knob. So let's go ahead and bring that back. Next, we're gonna talk about the attack. The attack is how fast the pedal is going to compress everything. So when you turn it to the left, the slower it's going to attack and compress the signal. So for instance, when you put the attack pretty slow, you can strum a chord. It's gonna let that natural signal kind of go and then it's gonna compress it towards the end. And then if you turn it up, it's going to compress it immediately or faster. So let's turn it all the way to the left and see what that sounds like. And then let's turn it all the way to the right and see what that sounds like. This is a knob you wanna use according to what you're playing. So if you're doing a lot of picking, a lot of chords for punk rock, rock, all of that different stuff, you're gonna to wanna to have your attack a little bit faster, so that way it's just making everything super even. If you're playing with more dynamics, you want to roll that attack back so that stuff can really, really shine. So that's what our attack knob does. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the presence knob. So this is a really, really nice knob to have. Not all compressor pedals have this. I really like this knob on this pedal because a lot of times when you're compressing your signal, it can sound really squashed, really fake because it's getting rid of that high end. So the presence knob brings that back in a really, really nice way. So I'll turn that all the way to the left so you can hear what that sounds like and then I'll turn it to the right so you can see what the difference is. All the way to the left. And now let's turn it all the way to the right, see what it sounds like. So as you can see, the presence gives it a lot more clarity. If you turn it all the way down, it starts to kind of lose character. You kind of kind of hear notes that are kind of lost. And the presence really, really brings all that back out. So the presence knob is a really, really nice knob to have. Put that back at 12. And then the last knob we're going to talk about is level. This is the easiest knob because it pretty much just means volume. If you turn it all the way to the left, the quieter is going to be the all the way to the right is going to make it much louder. So let's turn it all the way to the left, see what it sounds like. And then let's turn it all the way to the right. Headphone warning. So 
now that I gave you a overview of what it would sound like with some distortion, I'm gonna flip the script and give you another quick brief overview of what it would sound like with a clean tone. So first we're gonna start with the sustain, all the way to the left. Now we're gonna bring it all the way to the right. Okay, now we're gonna do the mix all the way to the left. Go all the way to the right. Right now, let's go to the attack all the way to the left. All the way to the right, let's see. Presence. Now, all the way to the right. Last but not least, our level. So now I'm gonna give you a starting point for most genres. Side note, this is different per guitar, per setup, and also if you're using a different compressor than the Galactivice compressor itself, but this should give you a general idea of where to start. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna go over the settings that I would use for any type of leads um, that you would be playing. So looking at our pedal, our mix is set to about 10 o'clock. This is gonna give us a nice blend of our guitar and the compressor signal. Our attack is a little bit pulled back for the long sustain notes that we're gonna be doing. The presence is at 12 o'clock. The sustain is a little bit cranked, but remember we're doing leads, so since we're not really playing any of the chord stuff as much, we can afford to bring down the louder parts of the chords to bring up the, the quieter parts with the lead stuff that we're doing on the higher end and the techniques that we talked about earlier, like pull-offs and hammer-on. So that, so our sustain is at about four o'clock. And then last but not least, our level is a little bit past 12, overall giving us the lead tone that I would, I would use if I was playing any type of lead work. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> So next up, these are the settings that I would use for a rock tone. So we have our mix just a little bit higher than what we would have for the lead, so we get a little bit more of that compressor signal. That's sitting almost touching 12, and right in between 11 and 12, but more on the, the 12 side, almost touching 12. And then we brought our attack higher because we're gonna be doing some more straightforward strumming stuff with the rock chords. We don't want it too high though, because it's gonna be a little bit more dynamic. So we have it set to about, I wanna say 11 as well. And then presence, we brought that up. So we get the clarity that is almost at two, sitting between one and two. And then our sustain, we pulled that, we pulled that back. We don't, we don't wanna lose the lower end of the, the chords that we're strumming for this, this type of music. The level is sitting in the same spot at about one o'clock. Let's see what that sounds like. All 
right, so next up we have our settings for punk rock, something that's a little bit more pick heavy and less dynamic. So that's where our attack really comes in. Overall, this is very similar to our rock settings, but we're gonna crank that attack a little bit higher. So that way our upstrokes match our downstrokes. It creates just a really balanced, super picky attack that we want for this punk rock kind of setting. So mix is at about 11, attack is at one, presence is in the same spot, about one, sustain is pulled back again, such as the rock setting at about 10, and then level is at one. So let's see what that sounds like. All right, so up next we have our settings for hardcore, and this is gonna be, again, similar to punk and rock, but the difference with this one is, is we're gonna bring in a little bit more of that sustain, because in hardcore, there's a lot of pick scream and harmonic, right? And that stuff is way quieter, and so we wanna bring that stuff up in our playing. So we have our sustain almost touching one, it's a little bit higher than, than the punk rock settings. Attack is in the same spot at one. We bring back a lot of the clarity with our presence being cranked a lot more. That is sitting at about three o'clock. And then our mix, we pull that down just a little bit so we get a little bit more of that blend of the natural guitar. So let's see what that's. <laughs> Okay, so next up, we have our settings for finger picking, okay? So our mix is about at 50%. We want a little bit more of that compressed signal. Our sustain is really what's gonna help with this aspect. So our sustain is cranked a little bit higher than usual. It's almost at two o'clock. Our presence brings in that clarity. It's a little bit in between two and three. And then our attack is dialed back a little bit. Our level is at the same spot. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay, and last but not least, we have our settings for funk, any type of spanky sound that we're going for. So, with this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the attack up, because we're gonna be doing a lot of up picking and down picking at the same time for that funky spank. Funky spank? We should have a spank counter how many times I say spank when I'm talking about funk. Sp funky spank. And then our sustain is gonna be similar to our finger picking settings to bring out the essence of all the little details that we're playing when we're playing funk. So let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so now that you heard all of these genres isolated by themselves, let's see what it would sound like with a full mix. Let's do it.
Okay guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, ring that bell for the notifications to stay up to date with all the content that we'll be putting on this channel. Also, leave a comment with what genres you would like to hear with the compressor. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.